Welcome to Cornell Orchards. Cornell Orchards has approximately 70 acres of apples in production. Apples are typically harvested between the last week of August and the first of November. Picking crews are brought in to harvest the apples as they ripen. Apples are picked and placed in wooden bins which are brought to the orchard store which are graded, bagged and sold. Inferior fruit is put back into the 17 bushel bins and transferred to the cider press. At the cider press, a dumping table takes the bushel bins, which hold 17 to 20 bushels at 42 pounds per bushel, and dumps them onto a sorting table. At the sorting table, again, damaged, bruised fruit, not fit for cider production, is removed. And the good fruit is transferred into a brush washer, which lightly washes the apples and sends them into a conveyor, which transfers them into our grinder. The grinder grinds the apples into a nice applesauce consistency, which is then packed in cloths in a press system called the rack and cloth press. Racks are stacked one upon another. Until a 14 stack is produced. Each stack contains approximately 20 to 25 bushels of apples, which, which results in around 70 to 100 gallons of cider. When the rack is in, in place, the hydraulic ram pushes the rack against the metal plate, which expresses the cider, which is then rough filtered and pumped into a large dairy tanker truck which delivers the cider to Cornell Dairy. So from our 4,000-gallon uh, uh, tanker truck uh, sitting outside, we're pumping off raw cider into our raw holding tank. Uh, we're filtering it on the way in. Uh, from here, the raw cider is being fed into our pasteurization system. From our raw holding tank, uh, the cold cider is being pumped into the balance tank. Uh, in a minute here, we'll start to see cider pumped in as the, uh, the level probe calls for cider. And this is keeping a constant flow of raw product into the pasteurization system. From the balance tank, the cold raw cider is being pumped uh, into the plate heat exchanger. Uh, the first section it enters is the regeneration section. We're using hot pasteurized cider to pre-warm the cold raw cider. And this uh, plate heat exchanger is about 93% efficient in terms of heat transfer. Uh, from the regeneration section, uh, we're coming out to our timing pump. So this pipe here is coming out of our regeneration section of the plate heat exchanger. Uh, at this point, the uh, cider is about 140, 150 degrees. Uh, 
being fed into the timing pump. The timing pump is giving us a constant flow of product into the heating section of the pasteurizer, uh, which is the most important part of the pasteurizer because that's where our product is being heated up uh, to our pasteurization temperature. As you'll see, uh, the, the arrows uh, are designating the flow of product. Uh, the stickers are still red at this point, denoting that the product is still unpasteurized and a raw product. So as we flow into the plate heat exchanger, uh, we're heating up to 170 degrees. Uh, coming out of the heat section of the press at 170 degrees uh, into our holding tubes, which snake back and forth across the frame. Those holding tubes are holding that product at 170 degrees for approximately 20 seconds. Uh, ensuring that we have proper pasteurization or heat treatment of the product uh, to ensure a five log reduction of, of bacteria, uh, particularly those which might be pathogenic. As we come out of the holding tubes, we're coming out at 170 degrees. Uh, we have two temperature probes uh, which are, are checking the temperature. If for some reason uh, we are below our set temperature of 170 degrees, our, leak, our divert valve uh, will go into divert and send our product back to the balance tank to be repasteurized. At this point, we're running in forward flow. Uh, the product continues back into the plate heat exchanger, uh, into the regeneration section. Uh, we're using the cold raw cider uh, to cool the pasteurized cider. Uh, it comes out of the regeneration section into the press, into our cold section. Uh, we're using 34 degree ice water to cool that cider back down to about 36, 37 degrees. As we come out of the pasteurizer uh, with our pasteurized cider at this point, and you'll see that uh, at this point our pipelines are labeled in blue. We have a pasteurized product. Uh, we can send the pasteurized product uh, to one of two tanks, pasteurized tank one, pasteurized tank two. Uh, today we're filling both of these tanks as we're pasteurizing about 2,000 gallons of cider. Uh, this tank holds 500 gallons and this tank holds 400 gallons. Uh, from these two tanks, uh, we'll pump product to one of our two fillers. Our cold uh, pasteurized cider is being pumped uh, to this bag-in-a-box filling machine. Uh, we're filling uh, five gallon uh, low, low density polyethylene bags uh, full of apple cider. Uh, these bags will be sent out to the dining units on campus. Um, and distributed uh, or dispensed uh, via our stainless uh, steel refrigerated uh, uh, milk and juice dispensers. Uh, we're running uh, about a hundred of these five gallon bags today. Uh, as well, we'll be running uh, half gallons of cider uh, on our, uh, our rotary filler uh, just to the left here.